Welcome again, Butch Bertolome here in just a minute with the Guru. And fantastic, this Thursday is such an exciting, fun, and so much things that we will learn. No? Alam nyo ngayong araw na ito, um, pagiging entrepreneur pala ay hindi lang pag, pag, uh, pagninegosyo. No? Meron daw palang isang tinatawag na I am. No, I am letter I and M, you know, impression management, no. So, para bang nakaka-intriga, no, but uh, sabi nga natin, uh, first impression creates a lasting impression. And come to think of it, hindi naman to tinuturo sa eskwela, eh, no, yung mga yung mga power dressing, yung mga tips on how to dress up, uh, what have you, but we have in our circle an entrepreneur, an empowered woman, no? An empowered woman, I tell you, she's one of the top fashion designers and image consultants. But before I let you, uh, let her talk, I just want you to watch this short movie clip. Let's watch it. W. Bergeis' Holiday 2013 collection is a celebration of sorts that we can all be glad to take part in. It's a joyous tribute to our very own culture, a fantastic mashup of our past and future worlds. My inspiration is actually geared towards looking at the past to move forward for the future. Each day I find myself having more and more friends in different parts of the world and I felt like I wanted to celebrate something that was truly Filipino. So I got inspired with hand-woven fabrics. I used a lot of Inabel Iloco and I also combined that with another hand-woven fabric. It's Dupioni silk. I fused it with more modern technology like laser cut fabrics and stretchy fabrics and different types of silks to come up with a harmonious blend of something that's more east meets west and old meets new. Diverse and full of flavor like the Filipino culture, Delby's clothes are made of simple components brought together yielding interesting results. My color palettes are really very simple. I used a lot of blacks reds, silvery grays. So very, very basic. I played around with these colors. My silhouettes are close to the body. They're very simple. And most of my clothes are very wearable. So I, I'd like to think that it's a fresh new take on tribal. It's mixing things up to come up with something a little bit different, more towards special occasion dressing. Well, Nakakabighani, hindi ba? <laughs> you know, I mean, watching uh, the introduction of this lady uh, tells us exactly that she has that caliber. So, wag na natin papatagalin pa ito. Let's us uh, call Miss Delby Bragais. Delby, good afternoon, good morning. Uh, live tayo, no? And uh, thank you very much for joining uh, this Just a Minute Guru. It's really an honor for me to have you because there is one question I'd like to really get to know and what is that I am, you know, yung bang impression management. Delby, go. Hello, hello. Hi everybody, I'm Delby Pergeis and I'm so happy to share with you about impression management right now. Impression management is really the art and the science of positively influencing perception about you, your product, your service, so that people would have super positive thoughts, feelings, and emotions about you, your service, your product. Okay. Um, this is something that's some, it's something new to me. You know? Honestly, I uh, pagiging entrepreneur, eh, you know, hindi yung nakilangan yung mga pananamit pa, yung mga style, but you know, you, you being um, uh, an image consultant, um, really, I'm so impressed you know, in this impression management. 
Ano ba talaga? What is really, um, how should an entrepreneur uh, really start to dress up? Uh, what, what should we do? I think it's very important to be mindful of what I call smart dressing. Okay, so SMART, acronym S-M-A-R-T. S for strategic. When you think about creating your wardrobe or what you are going to be wearing, it has to be long-term, big picture, where do I want to be and what the next level up is. What do I mean by that? If, for example, right now you are a secretary and one day you want to be the boss, then the recommendation there is to start leveling up your dressing, uh, more investment dressing, more mindful in your clothing choices so that you reach your goals. So one is strategic, M is money wise. So I always say purchase the most expensive that you can afford. So don't break the bank. You do not have <laughs> to purchase really, really expensive clothes, but also make wise choices, choices that will help you project a great first impression. A, I always talk about authenticity. So in Tagalog, magpakatotoo ka. So dress, dress like it's really you. It's not like, for example, you're going to be dressing and projecting yourself as somebody who you are not. Then that is a big no-no in personal branding and for anybody who wants to be an entrepreneur one day. Then we go to R, which is relatability. So I would always recommend that you choose clothes that people can relate with as far as your goals are concerned. For example, you are a seller a seller of, let's say you're selling health and nutrition products. So it would be great to wear clothes that talk about health, that make you look really, really healthy. So knowing what the best colors are and knowing, knowing how to project yourself, looking more vital, more energetic, more healthy instead of the opposite, which is more sickly. So how could you sell health? And nutrition products if you look sickly and um, basically T is really um, time bound which means there are certain clothes that really look passe already so so know the choices uh, that you're going to make so that you don't look dated you don't look passe you look now and relevant that's it wow fantastic lady uh, the, the smart S-M-A-R-T uh, but you know one thing with 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 people, uh, barabang they come in as they are, uh, you know, I mean, ano ba yung mga observations mo? Because I guess we really, we are, I don't know, we really go by the by that adage na sinasabi, first impression counts a lot, no? Um, so for example, if I'm a newly graduate, okay, and I want to start looking for a job, um, I want to start a business, no? Uh, that's something that we can, uh, we have to, we have to, uh, uh, we want to project. Ano yung dapat? Uh, what are the probably one or two tips that for for the graduates that you can share? Okay, for new grads or those that are going from campus to corporate, um, I would recommend number one head to toe dressing, meaning to say check everything from the top down to the shoes, so that when you go for that make or break interview, you really look professional, you look polished, and you look credible for the position that you're applying for. So um, basics, I would say, is a button-down shirt, trovenized collar for men. It can be in a uh, light color top and dark colored pants, um, shoes that are leather, well cleaned, well polished, looking clean, neat, and professional of course the hair has to be has to be styled correctly if you are applying for a bank and you go in the mohawk look i think there might be challenges <laughs> okay yes, <laughs> I, 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 I lost track mohawk 
Ah, ito ba yung mga naka yung mga, mga naka spikes? <laughs> yeah, or or else um let's say vice versa. If you are applying for a creative job in a creative industry, for example, you're applying for an advertising job, then it might it might be better if you come and look really really creative. So, you know, it depends on the industry. Number one, know the industry that you want to enter. Do your homework. Research. So, and if there's anybody you know so from you, there, then ask. Uh, yeah. The way, the way I look at it now is that, um, you know, you really have to do your due diligence on yourself, no? I mean, not just making an inventory of what experiences you have to offer, but really how you look and how you uh, sort of project yourself, Diva. Right? Is that right? Yes, absolutely. Um, what's happening right now is a lot of people have goals, they have dreams, they have visions for a great future, but they do not know that their image is one of their greatest resource, one of the things that they can use to propel them forward. And by image, I'm not only talking about your external like your appearance, no, we're talking about the A, B, C, D of image. A, for your appearance, externals, head to toe. B, your business behavior or how, how you are when it comes to networking events, meeting people, the business setting. Um, C, communication, of course, aside from verbal, there's body language or nonverbal communication. Very, very important. Visual impact is very strong. And D, digital. How do you come across in terms of the digital presence? So all of those will really impact anybody who wants to enter the corporate field, create their personal brand, or open their own business. Okay, so uh, let's talk about now the next part. You know, if I'm an entrepreneur, uh, which we are, okay, we're both are, um, how do we now uh, say, okay, how do we now do your power dressing up? You know, that's what sinasabi nga na iba, di ba? Like for example, uh, there are people who just come in slacks, uh, you know, sneakers without socks, and... and uh, Paano ba? Ano bang guiding? Minsan kasi uh, entrepreneurs probably na, may not have time to do that. No, what what kind of tip can you share with entrepreneurs? Okay, number one, if you are an entrepreneur, know the industry that you belong to. Is it a creative industry? Is it um, a finance-based industry? Uh, very very important. If it is a creative industry. The more creative you look, guess what? The better. So on the other hand, if it's more like um, a cerebral industry or you would like to be a consultant for, let, let's say, financial services, example, freelancing, uh, then you have to really look like an expert, a credible expert in the finance field. So more classic, more conservative, I would say, in a sense. Um, shirt and tie combinations, uh, pants, dark pants in neutral colors. If you have to wear suits uh, in your industry, it is always advisable to wear dark colored suits for the more, I would say, serious industries compared to the more um, casual laid back industries. And um, so if you're an entrepreneur, number one, know the industry. Number two, look for people who are those that you want to emulate look for people who when you see them i want to be that person one day or wow she has it so put together i admire this person look for those people within your industry and sort of like um, i wouldn't say copy them exactly but just just get um get a feel of how they dress because so, those are the salt works in your industry. So more or less, and then parang, the first yeah, one, yeah, parang they'll be you're more or less looking at uh, uh, a benchmark, no? In other words, if you're in the in industry of of uh, BPOs, okay, business process, 
you now try to look at how people dress up in those uh, in those uh, areas no and also uh, what about the like for example uh, you try to emulate other people in your place no because like for one, one one thing that i notice is that pag sinabi kasi minsan sa industry na casual business casual ano ba ibig sabihin no kasi minsan yung business casual nagiging formal eh <laughs> ano totoo ba yun Okay, so uh, we probably lost uh, connection, but uh, we will uh, we will connect with her soon, you know. But again, we are talking about uh, for those who are who came in late uh, viewers, we're talking to Del B. Bragais, a fashion designer and an image consultant. So Del B, there you are. Um, uh, yung pinag-usapan namin no, is how do you really dress up uh, for an as an entrepreneur? How do you do your first impression? Uh, if you're a starting bis, uh, entrepreneur, you're trying to apply, uh, or you're a graduate, sabi nga niya, maganda yung mga sinabi niya, no? like sinasabi niya, uh, know your industry, know who you are, know your posture, be smart, uh, don't break the bank. The you know, something that I, I really love to, uh, more ex to expound more. No? Kasi sinasabi nga na iba, halos baka mga mabaon ka na sa utang, kakabili-bili na mga mga designer no so hindi naman yun ang sinasabi niya no so uh, that, that that that's one thing that uh, in in uh, in business or being an entrepreneur image is also very very important and and it's not only for entrepreneurs no it's also for a lot of people whether you are uh, in the field of uh, you know service customer service uh, you are you are a food attendant you are a manager of a restaurant or a manager in an office you all have to know how you have to dress up no so this is one thing that I um, I'd like you know you to learn how Delby can really share with us all these tips no so uh, we are there you are Delby <laughs> so uh, the alam mo naman mga internet natin ngayon eh, medyo muy bilis na sana no but uh, there you are, Delby. We are we are we were cut off for a while, uh, and we're just saying that. Uh, paano ba yung mga you're you're trying to say that you have to look for an image in your industry where you can follow? Is that it? That can give you some inspiration. Okay. So somebody that you would like to emulate, but not necessarily copy, because of course we're all about authenticity and being yourself. Mm -hmm. Pero merong, there are people that we know. I mean, uh, like like uh, I'd like to show you the picture of uh, the founder of uh, Apple, uh, the founder who started, uh, you know, Facebook. <laughs> um, may branding sila, no? I mean, how would you analyze this, uh, Delby? Um, he is known more for wearing hoodies and and um, basically very casual clothing. But when he had to face the Senate recently, then he had to wear a suit. So mm -hmm. also, it's very important to determine the function that you're going to wear your outfit to. Are you wearing your outfit to a formal gathering? Is it a casual gathering? Is it simply a networking event? Who will be in that networking event example? So, of course, if... if there are certain indicators to find out what you are going to wear. Okay. If it is going to be a high-end event where, let's say, you, you will have distinguished members of the board or you're going to be having um, judges, etc., then you might want to level up and wear a suit or a formal barong, and, and especially the location or the venue. If it is a five-star hotel, Compared to, let's say, you're going to see each other in a coffee shop, it is a meet and greet, very casual among startups, definitely the type of dressing will be very, very different. Okay. So, like for example, uh, the late Steve Jobs, no? Uh, the late Steve Jobs started with, uh, what do you call that, a turtleneck, okay, and uh, a okay. denim. And if you look at the picture, he was just uh, wearing a sneakers. Uh, 
what what kind of projection are they trying to do to make uh in, kasi even when and when Steve Jobs was still young you know in these younger years uh he was wearing already that kind of branding uh, would you would you recommend for somebody to have that kind of that, branding too actually if you um study the history of Steve Jobs he, there was a time in his career that he actually had to wear business suits uh-huh. because that was um, for for um, a different kind of industry. However, he really, really goes for like a basic um, T-shirt, black um, denim and uh, rubber shoes, even when he was launching really, really <laughs> um how the iconic products in front of tens of thousands of people yeah. so at that point in time what you are saying is i'm very confident with myself that i really do not need to ascribe to whatever dressing codes there are so it is also when you when you analyze it it is also a show of confidence it is a show of power let me give you an example when when an applicant goes to see the boss for an interview, it is possible that the, uh, the applicant arrives in a button-down shirt, trophy nice collar, long sleeves, tucked in, belt, pants, and uh, dark pants, leather shoes. And he is going to be interviewed by somebody practicing his um, golf swing in basic white t-shirt and um, jeans and you know rubber shoes that by itself um, is a show of power and it's also a show of confidence because you can see one is an applicant and one is the boss so um, power dressing comes in many many ways and many forms and some think that it is wearing really expensive garments wearing signature suits or branded clothing but actually it's an expression of power and confidence but so that, uh, that is power is are we are we are we are different from asian you know in asian countries we we see the japanese entrepreneurs we see the japanese people dress up uh, are we are we distinctly different from our Asian neighbors, or are there are we we see some commonality? Because, like for example, uh, Western people they they love to wear suits, right? Um, but are we are we sort of distinct on that area, uh, Delby? I would say part of it is cultural because when you go to Japan, especially in, during rush hour, you're going to see trains fill up with people. Uh, most probably like five-ish or when the workday ends, you will see trains filled up with a lot of men in dark business suits. Okay, so it's partly cultural. Their, their culture, I believe, is very much based on a lot of respect. And part of showing respect for the institution that you're working for is coming to work dressed like being the best brand ambassador of the company that you are working for so there's a lot a lot of that in their culture now uh, let's talk about the western world in my experience i i i see both types there are those in business suits in the corporate world business suits and um, very dark dark business suits neutrals i see them always but on the other hand there are also those that are into startups, that are in t-shirts and into um, shorts and sneakers doing business by the beach or doing business in a coffee shop, etc. In an era of freelancing and startups, etc. Uh, populated by mostly millennials, although I have to say um, it's really open to people of all ages. There's also that side in the Western culture that they're so relaxed, dressed down, dressed down outfits. So they have this dichotomy. In the corporate world, they are expected to wear suits, although there is a general move worldwide 
not only in the U.S., also in Europe, etc., for a little bit more relaxation of the dress codes. Uh -huh. So, uh, more or less, yeah, and yeah, I noticed that uh, a lot of people would uh, be wearing uh, relaxed mode shirts, like even even on planes, you know, I mean, <laughs> there was a time like, I know, I remember when I was young, uh, my parents had to ask me to wear a suit on riding a plane, you know, I mean, so I go, and a necktie, wow, that was those days, those years, no, but uh, now, eh, parabang, uh, as if you're wearing, sitting next with somebody who's wearing shorts and, and, and even, and, uh, you know, sando ba, and uh, parabang, iba na, no, iba na yung mundo, no, Are, uh, is this part yeah. of our uh, the changing world that we are in, uh, the kind of dressing that people are now using, the mode. Uh. There are certain industries, like for example, the banking industry. For the banking industry, especially we're talking about money. Uh -huh. You know, there's a saying, people get funny when it comes to money. So for certain industries, especially that deal with finance and money, there is still more conservatism, more classic type of dressing, more formal type of dressing compared to those in the industries that have sprung up that were not present before. Um, there are jobs right now that weren't there a few years back. So we, we have a really a robust uh, changing la business landscape. So now there's a lot of relaxation. It seems to be like a general move for more relaxed dressing in certain industries. Um, freelancers, now there's a lot more freelancers than there were before. And talking about them, there are a lot of freelancers that might need a little bit more of help when it comes to projecting professional presence yeah so uh, like let's let's talk about our our uh, braining uh, miss universe katriona gray uh, uh, would you attribute her uh, winning as one of her power dressing aside from her posture and walk um was totoo ba yun? Okay. i mean uh, nadala siya sa nadala siya yung designer who really designed and really made how she walk uh, it really made a lot of impression is that true you know i would say number one she came prepared she did her homework she did not go there and um wasn't really bent on bringing home the crown so what this means is you you see people walking the runway you see models you see beauty queens with this beautiful lava walk etc <laughs> but actually how many hours went behind the scenes trying to perfect that walk when you see a speaker giving such an inspirational talk having excellent platform skills you only see that speaker for let's say an hour or so but how many hours went behind the scenes trying to polish that craft so catriona was very very prepared number two i think it's also mindset like when we talk about the entrepreneurial mindset yeah. her mindset what considering that this is not her first competition and she did lose the first time she entered an international competition so this time she, she was really um revved up mentally emotionally and i believe spiritually for bringing home the crown so oh. that that was another third she surrounded herself with people who were really supporting her because you you know it takes a village there's no such thing as you're gonna go it alone so any entrepreneur whether you're an entrepreneur a leader um, a founder of a company you really need to choose people that you will rely on, that you trust, that, that can help you transform yourself to be what you want to be. In this particular case, she had a fabulous designer. She had people who, who were really rooting for her, um, uh, people who taught her makeup, 
the walk, who would give her actual honest uh, feedback, etc. When you start walking, visual poison projection, body language, everything. When you step down the plane, you're good to go. Wow, fantastic. So, so but uh, but there'll be, there's one question here. Um, somebody said, um, do I have to spend tons and tons of money in order to power dress up, uh, in order to do the catwalk? You know, sabi nga nila, catwalk. Uh, how would you, what what would you advise? For example, I am a, I'm a, there's a secretary uh, who is applying. Um, ano yung dapat na na dapat niyang gawin? Uh, nagsisimula pa lang ng trabaho, you know. And and uh, what would ad, what advice would you say na? Eto gawin mo, eto dapat. Wag naman overdress. Misa yung pati makeup, di ba kayo sa image consultants kayo? Uh, you also tell them uh, if it's daylight or warm light, <laughs> di ba? I, I, I was sitting with one of the image consultants as, as well before and I was watching, wow, how intricate the business is. So what, what advice would you give for uh, somebody who's starting up na ito lang ang aking pera, you know, anong, anong pwede kong bilhin? Okay, so first of all, Alamin ang industriya na gusto mong pasukan. Know which industry. Number two, look at yourself. Take a hard, good look and find out what your assets are physically and what your liabilities are physically too. So I think it takes a lot of honesty. So if you know that you have very, very big hips and you have very, very small upper part, you might want to exercise some illusion dressing to try to balance off your figure just to just to try to give a more balanced um, look you try your best to create a great first impression in terms of appearance also stick to the professional basics um, a light shirt long sleeve true very nice or a short sleeve shirt depending on whether you're applying for um, a higher position or an entry level position that doesn't require um, uh, more form of dressing invest in a good shirt for men to be nice invest in dark colored pants the best colors are dark blue perhaps um, dark browns you have gunmetal grays black black is a staple so those are the best colors for pants for men and basic shoes usually it's called black when you're starting so get your get your basics right good quality belt now for a female I would say that come up with a light colored shirt. Usually these are whites or blues or pale pinks or or a, a nice pastel color and a dark skirt and pumps, leather pumps. The so, most basic starter shoes would be black. If you need a jacket, invest in a well-cut jacket that flatters your figure. So usually in the neutral colors. Wow. You know, listening to you, uh, Delby, fantastic. Sabi ko, para bang I have to go back to school uh, in order to uh, to really absorb so much, you know, because there are people really I admire, you know, when I watch TV personalities, uh, the way they talk, the way they express, the way they dress up. Uh, it's so admirable, you know, like, like, for example, even entrepreneurs that uh, I know, we are part of the Go Negosyo, Kapatid Mentor Me. We have seen a lot of a cross-section of entrepreneurs, no? And nag stand out talaga yung merong may pagka, the way they walk, the way they talk, you know? Di ba ganun ba yun? You know what? Um, same with you. But there's really such a thing as body language. And honestly, it is a studied it is mm -hmm. a studied program for some, for some, because they really want to to up level and to find all the tools and techniques to get them to their goals. Body language, very important, how you sit, how you walk, visual poison projection, how you are, how you carry your body, how you take up space, how you enter a room. All of those say something without you having to say a single word. So, parabang, you are you are sort of creating an aura, you know, as you walk. Uh, that uh, 
you know, without any words, people feel, you know, your presence. Ganun ba yun? Yep, definitely. Because there is such a thing as people who really light up the room when they go in. Have you seen those kinds of yeah. people? When they enter a room, you feel their presence. So that we are entering the realm of charisma. Uh -huh. We are entering the realm of presence. And that's why there is a course called Executive Presence. You know, where, where corporations really invest in their C-suite or their top-level executives so that well, they get equipped with the skills and the techniques to be able to make super-duper positive first impressions. And if they're leading, leading groups, then, then it will help them create that that impact so that they could positively influence their team so you, you, part of that is charisma yeah you know delby you mentioned about that and uh, i'm getting some text messages right now uh is delby Rao offering a seminar so that they can have a crash course on how they can power up uh tell us you you mentioned about your your January 24 na, no, this one. So tell us more about this seminar. Uh, th th this one is not really a seminar about up-leveling your professional image. This is more of for people who would like to explore the business of image. It's, it's actually hosted by the AICI Philippine chapter. AICI is the world's largest and leading Association of Image Professionals, and we have a chapter in the Philippines that is hosting this on the 24th of January. So th this is more for people who'd like to know the business of style. And so I promised my 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 followers that I would give them my my secrets and my story about how I started my journey and talk about purpose, profit and potential of the industry because let's face it it's it's monetizing a passion so profiting from your passion is something that i'm very much for so this this is more towards um, to help people know more about the business of image but if they are interested in um, leveling up their professional image then most probably they could drop me an image, uh, an image um, uh, email uh -huh. at uh, delby at imagedesignersinternational.com. So, in other words, what you say, in this AICI, you have a you have a group, no, an image consultants, no. This is uh, I've I've seen some some friends of mine who are also members. Uh, how big is this group in the Philippines right now? In the Philippines, the membership is less than 30. Uh -huh. In the world, it's um, several thousands. And uh, bottom line is all of all of members of our group are registered members of AICI. So it's, it's a global association. And um, the headquarters is in the U.S. And, and so we really work for the recognition and education and certification of image consultants. So it's, it's, it's more like we have personal and corporate image consultants. So um, among us, we do have a lot of corporates that are in our client roster. And um, we have, uh, we do in-house training for these companies in the field of professional image development or um, body language or soft skills like um, I would say etiquette, business etiquette, branding, mm -hmm. personal branding, executive presence, so leadership branding. So all of all of those also form part of the menu of services of corporate image consultants. So it's really a super duper exciting industry. It's a sunrise industry. Wow. So so uh, that's why in Asia. In other, words, if, in other words, if I'm an entrepreneur and I have about, what, 20, 50 people and mostly service-oriented, um, can, uh, can they sort of uh, organize and invite probably you or the association to handle uh, sort of a training for the, for the people? 
actually we always do that um, image consultants have their own corporations usually so um we have come we have our own company like, like in my case there's image designers international and what we do is we give um, talks or we do um, lunch and learns or anything from half a day to two day programs depending on what the company needs so usually I would do a needs analysis first followed by recommendations and um, and usually it is held either in the premises of the corporation or um, a venue is set up so yes the answer is yes all yeah. image consultants are ICI. So do that. more or less, um, you, you, when you approach, uh, they have to be a member of AICI, right? Uh, sort of get a credibility there, no? Uh, for the for 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 getting an image consultant. Pardon, pardon. Uh, when, like, for example, somebody wants to get and organize uh, for their company. Uh, would you really recommend that they get from those who are accredited by your association? Because there are there are some people who would say, well, I've worked with a sort of a makeup company, so I become an image consultant. Uh, in other words, you get what you pay for, no? But uh, is that worth doing? Because some people will try to Absolutely. save. You know, it, it is not the same. Um, <laughs> we are not in the business of selling makeup or product. We actually help create the delightful first impressions and um, it, it's it's more for knowledge transfer and inspiration so at the end of the day you get what you pay for and I think it's an investment to hire an image consultant especially a certified image consultant from AICI Philippine chapter that's why we're working towards certification so when you do when you actually enlist the services of a certified image consultant, you get with that the peace of mind that this person has studied, that this person knows the core competencies for image and has been exposed to world-class levels You know, we have a friend uh, watching from Dubai uh Delby and her name is Malu Prado. She runs a very, very uh staff. Well, of course, uh, normally I would request if the client is online, I would request for a screenshot of the because we do have clients that are online, screenshot of the staff specifically. But for a travel agency, it's very important that you look very credible, you know what you're doing, very professional looking, um, head to toe, head to toe has to be put together. So mm, does she have uniforms for them or the, does she require them to, to, to dress a certain way, dressing guidelines and, and is there some uniformity or some harmony in the way they look such that when a client comes in, they 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 do look very professional and in harmony or do they mostly do their business online because it doesn't matter some people are of the impression that um okay anyway my business is online so i really don't have to to take care of the way i look but that is not true uh -huh. because the way you feel depends also on the way you look because um, there was a study that more or less there are 55 times in a day you get the opportunity to see yourself whether you go to the bathroom you see yourself in the mirror you go um drive the car and you see yourself in the you, you know the rear view mirror etc so every time you see yourself if you know that you're very well put together you look good we have a saying look good feel good do good so it doesn't matter if you're doing digital only um, so for our friend who is in in uh, another country with a travel agency, um, I would highly recommend that uh, she uh, take a step back, take a look at her staff, whether they are all professionally dressed, there's harmony, and they leveled up, so that when they transact business, you know, it gets to be on a more professional level, and they feel good about themselves, more confident. So parang, uh, you know, one thing I noticed, like for example, uh, 
airline industry, they really give so much attention to poise, to the way they walk, the way they look. No, uh, is that really? You know, talagang they really pump in a lot of money and resources for training. Because the way they, I mean, imagine they're up there 36,000 feet and they're serving hundreds of customers and they have to manage and to look so good and so refreshing. Parang ganon, no? Yeah, that, that's actually um, an area. Training is, a, is an, a serious area for airlines to invest in. If you look at if you look at the flight attendants, everything from if they have um, a hairpiece to the makeup, to the bags that they carry, the shoes that they wear, the clothes, usually they're impeccably cut. Uh -huh. And if the airline can afford, then it's by a designer. But of course, there are certain airlines that are on the budget side, which that's fine too. That's part of their branding. But what I'm saying is if you're 36,000 feet up in the air, you, you want to be in a position that you command respect. So when you say, sir, could you please fasten your seat belts? That person will fasten their seat belts. If you go there, sir, could you please fasten your seat belts? <laughs> so, parang, uh, so Bruce, what I'm saying is Bruce everything the thing, from the way you say it. <laughs> the way you say it, the way you, you move, the way you dress, everything goes together. So that's part of impression management. In the event of an emergency, you are in a position you know that you can say, everybody, this is what we're going to do. Of course, the captain's there too. But <laughs> you, need that, <laughs> you need that sort of like respectability and confidence and, you know, respect. Okay. So uh, anyway, let me acknowledge the people. Huh? We're, we're reaching as far as... Uh, you know, Grace Aduka in, in Sambuanga, she's a DTI with the Department of Trade. Uh, we have um, many people. We have a, uh, an entrepreneur who started in gadgets, uh, si May Ann Padrilan. Uh, Mylene Manalo. Oh, Jimmy Gomez, you know, this is my colleague who is uh, an entrepreneur now. No, It's a landed guy. No? Jimmy, thank you for, for visiting us. Um, we have from Dubai, we have from... Uh, as far as Monaco is watching as well, wow, uh, they'll be, you're really uh, reaching uh, so many people already. So, um, they'll be, where can they get in, that, get in touch with you again? Okay, so I'm pretty active in LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great B2B platform. So, just please look for Delby Braguys in LinkedIn and my name's going to pop, pop up. And you can follow me on LinkedIn. But for those that are more fashion fashion oriented, I'm on Instagram too. Mm -hmm. And if you want to inquire about courses, whether you're a, an individual or for corporate courses, then there's uh, Delby at ImageDesignersInternational.com. So you can contact me through any of those channels. Oh. Of course, there's Facebook too. Okay, so uh, again, they'll be in on behalf of just a minute with the guru. Really, thank you very much. I know you all, Deca, by the way, you, I remember you wrote a book, no? What book is that? Uh, I remember oh. that. Charan! <laughs> See, I remember. I remember because you gave me a copy of the book. <laughs> what is that book about? So it's really a book about personal branding. And um, it, it's a book that's close to my heart because I, I think it's a way that I'm making a positive contribution in, in my own special style. So it's a book that talks about the eight steps to a personal brand makeover for influence and incredible income. So, yeah, it's available in fully booked branches. And of course, at my boutique at BGC, North Road, and through Amazon. It's Amazon Kindle. Wow, fantastic. You know, I'm so intrigued. You know, when I saw the copy of the book, Purple Pig Wears Red Lipstick. Oh, fantastic. I mean, dun pa lang eh. Uh, you know, I, I caught, my eyes caught on the title. So, uh, again, uh, Delby, thank you very much. I, I really appreciate that. I know we keep seeing each other on Goni Gosho Mentoring. Uh, you are also a mentor. 
uh, you try to help a lot of entrepreneurs and you try to pitch in how we can be proud of our country. So again, Delby, thank you very much. Maraming maraming salamat po. Bye! Bye, everybody! Bye! Okay, so we, we saw Delby Bragais, no? Um, she's so empowered, so, so passionate, becoming an entrepreneur, but she's focused on image, she's focused on fashion design. Uh, she gives tips uh, to people who want to level up. She wants, uh, she gives practical tips for for any type of people who are after image, you know. Basically, what I learned today is something, no? Be smart. Again, don't spend so much money. Don't break the bank, sabi nga ni Delby. But know your industry. Know where you're entering. Know how you can dress up. Um, again, look at uh, your attitude. It's not just the dress, but also the mindset. But it's so important no, for for any person, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're an employee, whether you're a teacher, uh, you're, you're serving um, in, in a restaurant, everything must be impeccable. And that calls for the discipline of oneself. No? So again, this is something that we learn and try to get hold of her book, The Purple Pig Wears Red Lipstick. And if you want to get in touch with her, it's uh, on delbybergais.com. She has a website or LinkedIn. No? So again, on behalf of Just a Minute with the Guru, thank you, thank you very much. Because in the coming days, we will also have more and more entrepreneurs. Oh, by the way, we are confirmed. We have somebody from London. No? Uh, not to report on the Brexit, <laughs> but to report on how he turned from an OFW to becoming an OFE. Uh, we're also having somebody from Dubai. Uh, again, this person has been there for years and uh, he will also be sharing with us what he learned and how he, can, how he became an entrepreneur. Also from Monaco, no? Uh, this young man is so excited that he wants already to be on board. But I said, hold on, hold on, relax, you know. So again, on behalf of Just a Minute, Butch Bartolome, if you want to follow me on my YouTube channel, go and check out my channel, Armando Bartolome or Franchise Consultants. Again, God be glory. Mabuhay po tayong lahat. Maraming salamat po.